given me a good wife? Where did I learn how to have a family? Where did I learn how to pastor a church? Right out of this book. God has saved me, but he's given me a book. Amen. He's given me his own precious word. I bless him. I bless him. I bless him that I have the eternal, inerrant, never dying word of Almighty God. God from the Bible. Hallelujah. God for the Bible. We ought to bless the Lord. God has kept us the book. In all of these days, the old black preacher said, it's been through the flood and the flood couldn't drown it. It was fed to the lions and the lions couldn't eat it. It's been through the fiery furnace and the fire couldn't burn it. I would like to add to that. It's been in the camp of the liberals and the liberals can't destroy it. We have the word of Almighty God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Thank God for the Bible. Hallelujah. I've caught myself riding down the road, picking it up, loving on it, kissing it. Amen. It is the book of life. I got it. For the Bible. Wonderful. Book divine. What a precious treasure. Hey man, it's mine. It keeps me in the right way. It's kept me out of hell. Hallelujah. It, it... Yesterday or Tuesday, I was driving down the road. I can't remember. I guess it's yesterday. I was going to had an eye appointment. Hey, see, my eyes checked. And uh, I saw it was cold. Man, it was 20 at the house yesterday, Brother Eric. And I, I, I just happened to see a bicycle. And on it was an old man, wrinkled, about like I am, probably my age, maybe a little younger than me, an old coat on, and a hat, trying to keep warm. And I thought, that poor man's probably slept on the bridge. My heart just ached. He's looking through a garbage can. That's on the street. And I, I can't say this for sure, Brother Gravely, but it's almost just like the Holy Ghost said so that would have been you. And I wept. And it would have been me, Brother Tim, but something got in between me <laughs> and that garbage can. A man loved me enough to tell me the old, old story that starts out in the book, the first book of this Bible. It runs all the way through like a scarlet thread to the last book. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm glad somebody gave me the message of this book. Amen. I was reading a, a story last night. In, in a book. And it said this missionary went to these, uh, uh, to the uh, country, wherever it is, that has the Ganges, if I'm pronouncing that right, river. It's a Muslim, Hindu, Hindu, yeah, yeah, Hindu country. Was it India? And this missionary was there. 
And he said, um, he said the, 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 there in that time, when someone was dying, they believed the river was sacred. And they'd carry them down in their last few hours and put them on the cot, Brother Lance. And, and, and then they would put their feet in the edge of that river and let them die. And they thought that would bless them and give them a paradise when they died. And said this missionary was coming by these guys carrying this fellow on the cot. And that's where they was going with him. And said he was, he was resisting heavily. Said he just, please, please, I don't want to go. Oh, please, I don't want to go. Don't take me down there. Because he knew that would be it. They'd walk off and leave him. And somehow the missionary interrupted that. And, and, and got them stopped. And he asked him, he said, why did you not want to go down, that, down to that river? He said, sir, I'm a Christian. <laughs> he said, how in the world did, did you become a Christian? He said, years ago I heard a missionary preaching. And said he was preaching out of a Bible. And I said, oh, sir, give me that book. And you... <laughs> Was it Sir Walter Scott when he lay dying? Said, bring me the book. Said, which book you want? He said, there's just one. The Word of God. Bring me the Word of God. But anyway, he said, well, well tell me about and said, he said, I told that missionary, please, sir, give me one of those books. I got to know more about that book. Said, I've never heard anything about love. Tell me some more about that book. The missionary said, I'm sorry, sir. The only copy I have is the one I'm preaching out of, and I just can't part with it. He said, can't you help me? He said, I'll tell you what I'll do, buddy. And he said he tore a, a leaf, a leaf, I guess maybe a back leaf or something out of the Bible, and he said he wrote on it and he said, you take this and you just study it and said, if you'll stay with this and you'll follow it, you'll learn about this love. And he said, sir, I carried that page for days and days. And he said, here's what that missionary wrote on it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he said, I carried that. Could it be? Could God love somebody like me? Hey, I'm telling you this book, thank God it's a powerful book. I want to say we don't have to sharpen it. It's sharp enough. Amen. We don't have to strengthen it. It's strong enough. Just yield what the word of God says. Randy Pike said, when he was a missionary in Australia, oh Lord, preacher. No, I got got to quit. And he said, he said this old Russian farmer was out in the field one day, and he said there came a piece of paper floating by, and said he picked it up and he looked at it, and it's a part of a Russian Bible, and about all he could make out of it were these words, and the word. And the Lord spake unto Jeremiah. So he went to the house and said, Honey, have you ever heard anybody named Jeremiah? She said, No. I, no. I never heard anybody named Jeremiah. So he started asking through town, Have you ever heard anybody named Jeremiah? Do you know where Jeremiah is? Have you ever heard anybody by that name? Nobody ever heard him. And his wife finally said, Honey, said, why do you want to know somebody by the name of Jeremiah? He said, I read this piece of paper the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, if we just act on the light. That's what he's doing, Brother Blue. He's acting on the light. And he said, I, I, I read this piece of paper. And it said, the Lord spake unto Jeremiah. And I thought, if I could find Jeremiah, I'd, I'd find out what he did or where he was that the Lord would speak to him. I'd want to get there. I'd want to do what he's doing so the Lord might speak to me. And he kept on and on until eventually. 
he ran into a member of the underground church that led him to the Lord. He became a preacher of the gospel. I love, I love the old Bible. Thank God for the Bible. Amen. Thank you, preacher. I'm sorry I took too much. Wasn't that good preaching? We ought to just get around this altar this morning. Thank God for our Bible. All right, let's take our Bibles, if you will, and uh, turn to the book of Judges. Appreciate the emphasis on the Word of God. And for those who uh, ponder it and pray over it and study it, and deliver it. Uh, somebody asked me one day what I thought about other translations. I said, I don't. <laughs> I wasn't raised in church. I didn't know A from B. I couldn't have told you who Jesus was or anything until I heard that gospel. And it was preached to me out of this old book. And it worked. And it's worked ever since. So I got no reason to think about anything else. <laughs> That's the truth. I never have given it a thought. I praise God for it. We've looked a little bit at these uh, hands that are found in the scriptures. Much to say about it because uh, I think it's they're connected to our hearts. And uh, Again, we can go all the way back to the garden. It was a couple of pair of hands that got us in the mess. Yeah. First murder was with a pair of hands. And hands have been involved in everything since, good and bad. Uh, we noticed that David had those sensitive hands uh, to what God wanted to do through them. I want to have sensitive hands, don't you? Uh, Joseph had those saving hands, Christ-like hands. I too want to have those hands. But uh, for a few moments this morning, I want to, uh, I want to use uh, Samson's hands, and I want to preach on what I call the storied hands. Or I would call them the famous hands of Samson. Of course, there are a lot of men that books have been written about because of famous things they've accomplished with their hands. We've all watched the movie concerning uh, Sergeant York that captured 132 Germans, killed 28, and did it alone with his hands. And man, that's just been spread abroad. I don't know if you can compare that to a man that can uh, take his hand and kill a thousand and rip a, a lion into bits and pieces. Uh, Samson has some storied uh, hands. But the thing that seemed to grip my heart when I thought about these, these hands of Samson, and he is a puzzle to all of us, I think, is... Uh, is that it just seemed like that though he had hands anointed and empowered by God, yes. he really didn't have a heart to go with it. He was out of kelter in other areas of his life. 
And he didn't have much sense. He had hands, but he didn't have a head. He didn't have a heart. And I thought about 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. The Bible said, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I pondered uh, Samson's hands, I realized that it is possible to have God move in one area of your life and yet you lock him out of other areas. That's right. Yes, sir. And when that is true, one's going to pull against the other. And the story's not going to end well. And so I want, to, uh, I want to look at four passages of Scripture, will not be lengthy. And I want to emphasize this matter of the storied hands of Samson. And again, I think we could, uh, we could say that really if you could follow the gestures, the accomplishments, and the endeavors of a man's hand, you could write his story as a result of it. If you could tell me what he's got his hand into, what his hand's doing, we could write the book. And I want us to, I want us to notice, let's look in Judges chapter number uh, 14. And verse number 6, we'll just look at four passages. Judges chapter number 14 and verse number 6. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he rent him, talking of this lion, as he would have rent a kid. And notice this phrase, and he had nothing in his hand. Look in verse number 9. And he took therefore in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother and he gave them and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. He's got nothing in his hand. And we're going with his story. And now he's got honey in his hand. And then let's, uh, let's look on over, if you will, uh, to chapter number 15 and verse number 15. The Bible said, And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. He's got nothing in his hand. He's got honey in his hand. Now he's got a jawbone in his hand. And then in chapter number 16, verse number uh, 29, we conclude there. And Samson took hold of two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. Samson has got some things in his hands and they seem to tell us his story. Can we look at it? First of all, he has nothing in his hands. For most of us, or all of us, that's the beginning of the story. That's what makes him famous. He's got nothing in his hands. And yet he approaches a 600 pound beast. He approaches a lion and with those hands, uh, he famously rips it apart. With nothing. And I want to say to you here before we look any further that there is no doubt that Samson has faith because he's in Hebrews 11, the scripture said, 
He's numbered among those that have faith. Somehow stirred into that, they some faith in those hands. Samson's got some spirit because the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. We can't negate that, annul that. God moves on him, and it is God's Spirit that operates in his hands. Samson has a calling, and this is the reason why the power is in his hands, because in that calling is, is this, this sending forth this man with power to destroy the enemy who has ruled Israel for 40 years. Samson has been given a purpose with his hands. And there is evidence that he has supernatural influence and power in his hands. What hands he has. (laughs) What a story to begin with. Man, where is this thing going to go? Especially when we look at the history of Israel and and where they're at. Here comes this guy. Look at his hands. (laughs) This is going to be great. He's got hands that can overpower their forces up in their fences. Hands that can unleash their foxes and hands that can end even their joking and their follies as he pushes out those pillars. There there is so, there is great potential. Uh, Let's just go ahead and start. I mean, I mean, I'm for it. Let's just go ahead and start and write the book on Samson. Man, with a guy with a hands like that, there's got to be a good story here. He's got nothing in his hands. That's the beginning of the story. And what a wonderful story that is. How that this guy born in this place, who in and of himself is nothing but God resting on him, can do great feats. That's a good story. I don't feel like my story began until I met Christ. I don't feel like I had any purpose in life till he saved me. Now, I'm so thankful for that calling and that spirit that he's rest upon, upon me. And I'm glad for the gift that he gave me when he called me to preach. And brothers and sisters, that's where the story all began for me. But not just for me. Can't you refer to those things God has done for you and in you and through you? And it seems as though that that is the story. That is the beginning of the story. That's where you start telling it. (laughs) Somebody said, what's your life all been about? Well, let me take you back to where it all began. And it'll all begin with what God has done in you and for you and through you. And what a great story that is. The beginning of the story. Precious, whether it's in my life. But boy, don't you like to see it developing in other folks' lives? Don't you like to see it in others? That you can see that the hand of God is moving. And you can see that in them, so to speak. As you could see it in Samson's hands, you just stood back and marveled and said, What a God, look what He can do through Samson's hands. This is a big story. This is front page. Yes, sir. (laughs) he has nothing in his hands wow Uh you want to get folks attention you write that down record that but let's go to verse number uh, 9 of the same of the same text we've read read the verses He has nothing in his hand. But then in verse number 9, he's got honey in his hand. He's got honey in his hands. Now, we've had the 
beginning of the story. And if you know anything about Samson's story, you know he was born a Nazarite. And there were vows that were connected to that Nazarite. And I don't want to elaborate on it, but I'll just tell you one of the things was he wasn't supposed to come close to a dead body. He wasn't supposed to drink any kind of uh, alcohol or anything to do with uh, the vine. Uh, he wasn't supposed to have his hair cut. Those were things that seemed to be basics for his life from the beginning. That's what the angel told his parents. And of course he understood because he even told Delilah, I'm a Nazarite. So he knew that. But here we are in the beginning of the story, and in the beginning of the story that seems to be such a great story, he reaches into the belly of a dead beast, and he pulls out honey. And an alarm goes off. And I don't want to be too judgmental, but I want to submit to you that right there at that point, if I didn't know anything else about Samuel, or about Samson, I believe that I could tell you how the story was going to end. It wasn't going to be good. We're at what I would call in my phrase, the beginning of the end of the story. We just started. And now right here at the beginning, I can already see the end of the story. Why? Because he's playing games. He's walking tight ropes. Uh, he's getting cl too close. Uh, he's, he's fooling around with something that is, that is so divine and so precious. He seems like he's taking everything for granted. As he begins to pursue those things that are not in balance with what God has, has began His story with. We're at the beginning and we can already see the end. <laughs> so, whoa, Samson, whoa! Whoa, don't, no! We don't want to write this story this way. Stay away from that! Don't get in those vineyards. If you get down there in those vineyards, it's, it's going to be trouble. Right. Somebody said, oh yeah, but God kept on using His hands, and I believe that. God still accomplished His, his purposes, but sometimes He has to do it in spite of us. He's working through Samson's hands, but he's doing it in spite of everything else that Samson's doing. I think there could have been a better way to accomplish that. I could almost write the story, though I wouldn't know the intricate details of it, when he puts his hand in the belly of this, uh, this beast, and he will not even tell his parents where he got that from, because he knows they're going to rebuke him for that. They've already told him he didn't even need to fool with this woman, but he, he's not even going to respect them in that. He's just playing games with supernatural things. I would say that because it charges my heart. This, this burdens my heart for my own self. Yes, sir. That it is, it is possible to be called of God, to be saved, and even to be given a precious gift, but play around with it. 